Jelani, come down to the stage. Oh, they need me at the stage. I have to go. I'm Jelani Aladdin, and I play Kristoff in Frozen on Broadway. Welcome to Brownsville. This is where I grew up. First stop is going to be the only place to get my hair cut because I don't trust anyone else to cut my hair except for Pierre, who's my barber. I've been going to him since I was 12 years old. Being an actor wasn't something I knew was a profession or a career or something I could do. My parents were very strict about education growing up. It wasn't until I went away to boarding school for high school I did a program called A Better Chance. So they took students from inner city schools, took me out of Brooklyn, and they plopped me down into New Canaan, Connecticut, which is like the complete opposite. This program, you were required to do an after school activity. So I didn't want to play football. So they're like, audition for the musical and see what happens. So I auditioned for Susical the Musical and uh, somehow they cast me as the cat in the hat, which I was just like, <laughs> what do I do now? And I had to learn how to act, sing and dance. Towards the end, I was like, that's it, I'm done. Thank you so much for having me, it's been great. I was like, I'm not auditioning for the next show. One of my best friends, she pushed me against a locker and said, if you walk away from this, you're walking away from the rest of your life. And for me, as like a 14 year old, I was shook. I was just like, whoa, okay, if somebody really believes in me that much, then maybe I should do it. I did the summer intensive at NYU, CAP 21. I mean, that summer I had my first acting class. And that's why I said, oh, oh, this is what I wanna do. I finally understood so many things. Um, and that's when I said, well, I wanna do this for the rest of my life. I wanna be an actor. Oh, yeah, there. Huh? What are you playing? Oh, um, no, I'm in Frozen on Broadway. Frozen. Yeah. Uh -huh. Can we get a little piece? Oh, no, 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 Give us one line. One line from what, the show? Oh, God. It's just like, reindeers are better than people spend. Do you think that's true? So that's like one of the little, like, little lines. The vibrato, the vibrato is key. Since I was a kid, I've always wanted to be a Power Ranger. That was like a thing. At that time, it was just play. But little did I know that that was the root of imagination, of, of storytelling becoming part of my DNA. This is my house that I grew up in. This is where most of the Power Ranger action happened. It's something about imagining a world and trying to recreate it attracted me at a young age. Though I didn't understand it was acting, I just thought it was fun. This is my mom. I am very fortunate that as a black man in America with immigrant parents, that they always said yes and. They always said, okay, you wanna do that? You be the best at it. I, I thank them every single day for that because that instilled in me a belief that so many young men who look like me don't have. I began singing when I was very young because my parents were very religious, are very religious. And so we would go to church every Sunday and I began singing church songs. Very emotional for me to be here because uh, this is where I began singing. Um, that's making me cry because I'm just remembering, you know, it's like, amazing grace will always be my song of prayer. Oh, I remember, I remember, I remember so well. We were raised with this intense focus on if you want to get to this place, you got to work to get to that place. It's not just going to be handed to you. I went to an open call for Frozen. I guess it was a week, only a week later, you know, I got a call being, hey, can you come in for a pre-screen for Kristoff? And I was like, Kristoff, like, what is going on? This is like a white musical. They, they're not going to cast me. Like, what? I, I'll go in, sure. So I went in for the pre-screen, left the pre-screen, 15 minutes later, I got a call from my manager, hey, they want you to come in tomorrow morning to meet the entire creative team and producers. And I was like, tomorrow, oh, okay, great. So I, you best believe that night I went back and watched the movie because I was like, okay, this could be like, this could actually be happening. Went in, I did everything once for the team. And I remember Michael Grand just goes, anyone need anything else? Thank you. And I was like, oh, I got cut, that's it. That's it, that's the end of the road. 20 minutes later, I get a call from my manager saying, hey, you're going straight to final callbacks. Halfway through that, I get the call that I'm gonna be doing Frozen on Broadway and playing Kristoff, and 
my life didn't change forever. So this is the yurt and welcome to my dressing room. Uh, this is it. So I usually start by cleaning out my filter to steam because I got to steam that throat before I go sing these notes out here. I'm going to have some dinner. And tonight I got poke, which is not at all what I normally eat. I normally eat like junk food, like chicken fingers and french fries and pizza. I'm, I apologize that I'm, my diet isn't better. But, you know, when I'm doing the show, I'm sweating so much that I like to actually eat um, a lot of things that are like carb and calorie full because I'm going to lose it all by the end of the show anyway. But tonight we're doing poke. Tonight <laughs> we are very healthy. For a long time, I would look in the mirror and not be happy with what I was seeing. You know, I had a gap tooth as a kid. This industry is about how you look, right? How you look, how you sound. And it's difficult also being an African-American actor because people expect something when you walk in the room. They expect you to sound a certain way and act a certain way. And until I learned through experience that you can redefine that definition, I was so scared. I've always felt not good enough. I felt not right enough, not black enough. I felt like my sound was always not enough. So, um, but yet I still try. You have to go in the process of learning to trust yourself. If you can just be you, and there will be a place for you. If there's not a place for you, then make a place for you. There's a lot of highs and no's. There's so many jobs you're gonna to be told no for, um, but the ones that you do get told yes for, they change you and they help you grow. First I put on my undergarments, then the pads, then I put on my pants, and then I put my suspenders on my sweater on over that and then I pin in that hat, that iconic Kristoff hat and I am off to the races. And there I am. I am now ready for showtime. The feelings that I was feeling on opening night, I, wow, I just I had like a sense of memory where I feel like I'm about to cry because the curtain rose. The first thought that went through my mind was I'm making my family proud. That's all I want to do in my life. That's all. I just want to make them proud. I just want them to say, that's my son. That's always been my goal in life. I go to the stage door and there's so many people out there waiting all the time to like, you know, just say thank you. I've gotten some very special moments where, you know, students of people of color have come up to me and be like, we're so thankful that you're in this or young boys who are like, my dream role is now Kristoff because of you and that. That is exactly why I do my job.